Srimad Bhagavatam, translated with commentaries by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Canto 1, Chapter 2, Divinity and Divine Service. Text 5. O sages, I have been justly questioned by you. Your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are of relevance to the world's welfare. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. Purport As it is stated herein before, in the Bhagavatam, the absolute truth is to be known. So the questions of the sages of Namasharanya are proper and just because they pertain to Krishna who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth. In Bhagavad Gita, the Personality of Godhead says that in all the Vedas, there is nothing but the urge for searching after Him, Lord Krishna. Bhagavad Gita 1515 Thus, the questions that pertain to Krishna are the sum and substance of all the Vedic inquiries. The whole world is full of questions and answers. The birds, beasts, and men are all busy in the matter of perpetual questions and answers. In the morning, the birds in the nest become busy with questions and answers. And in the evening also, the same birds come back and again become busy with questions and answers. The human being, unless he is fast asleep at night, is busy with questions and answers. The businessmen in the market are busy with questions and answers, and so also the lawyers in the court and the students in the schools and colleges. The legislators in the parliament are also busy with questions and answers, and the politicians and the press representatives are all busy with questions and answers. Although they go on making such questions and answers for their whole lives, they are not at all satisfied. Satisfaction of the soul can only be obtained by questions and answers on the subject of Krishna. Krishna is our most intimate master, friend, father or son, and object of conjugal love. Forgetting Krishna, we have created so many objects of questions and answers, but none of them are able to give us complete satisfaction. All things but Krishna give temporary satisfaction only. So, if we are to have complete satisfaction, we must take to the questions and answers about Krishna. We cannot live for a moment without being questioned or without giving answers. Because the Srimad Bhagavatam deals with questions and answers that are related to Krishna, we can derive the highest satisfaction only by reading and hearing this transcendental literature. One should learn the Srimad Bhagavatam and make an all around solution to all problems pertaining to social, political, or religious matters. Srimad Bhagavatam and Krishna are the sum total of all things. Text 6 The supreme occupation, Dharma, for all humanity, is that by which men can attain to loving, devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted in order to completely satisfy the self. Purport In this statement, Sri Sutta Goswami answers the first question of the sages of Namasharanya. The sages asked him to summarize the whole range of revealed scriptures and present the most essential part 
so that fallen people or the people in general might easily take it up. The Vedas prescribe two different types of occupation for the human being. One is called the Praviti Marg, or the path of sense enjoyment, and the other is called the Nivriti Marg, or the path of renunciation. The path of enjoyment is inferior, but the path of sacrifice for the supreme cause is superior. The material existence of the living being is a diseased condition of actual life. Actual life is spiritual existence or Brahma-Bhuta existence, where life is eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. Material existence is temporary, illusory, and full of miseries. There is no happiness at all. There is just the futile attempt to get rid of the miseries, and temporary cessation of misery is falsely called happiness. Therefore, the path of progressive material enjoyment, which is temporary, miserable, and illusory, is inferior. The devotional service of the Supreme Lord, which leads one to eternal, blissful, and all-cognizant life is called the superior quality of occupation. This is sometimes polluted when mixed with the inferior quality. For example, adoption of devotional service for material gain is certainly an obstruction to the progressive path of renunciation. Renunciation or abnegation for ultimate good is certainly a better occupation than enjoyment in the diseased condition of life. Such enjoyment only aggravates the symptoms of the disease and increases its duration. Therefore, devotional service of the Lord must be pure in quality, that is, without the least desire for material enjoyment. One should therefore accept the superior quality of occupation in the form of devotional service of the Lord without any tinge of unnecessary desire, fruitive action, and philosophical speculation. This alone can lead one to perpetual solace in his service. We have purposely denoted Dharma as occupation, because the root meaning of the word dharma is that which sustains one's existence. A living being's sustenance of existence is to coordinate his activities with his eternal relation with the Supreme Lord Krishna. Krishna is the central pivot of living beings and he is the attractive living entity or eternal form amongst all other living beings or eternal forms. Each and every living being has his eternal form in the spiritual existence. And Krishna is the eternal attraction for all of them. Krishna is the complete whole, and everything else is his part and parcel. The relation is one of the servant and the served, and it is transcendental and is completely distinguished from our experience in material existence. This relation of servant and the served is the most congenial form of intimacy. One can realize it as devotional service progresses. Everyone should engage himself in that transcendental loving service of the Lord, even in the present conditional state of material existence. That will gradually give one the clue to actual life and please him to complete satisfaction. Text 7 By rendering devotional service, 
unto the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. One immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Purport Those who consider devotional service of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna to be something like material emotional affairs may argue that in the revealed scriptures, sacrifice, charity, austerity, knowledge, mystic powers, and similar other processes of transcendental realization are recommended. According to them, bhakti, or devotional service of the Lord, is meant for those who cannot perform the high-grade activities. Generally, it is said that the bhakti cult is meant for the sudras, vaishas, and less intelligent women class. But that is not the actual fact. The bhakti cult is the topmost of all transcendental activities, and therefore it is simultaneously sublime and easy. It is sublime for the pure devotees who are serious about getting in contact with the Supreme Lord, and it is easy for the neophytes who are just on the threshold of the house of bhakti. It is a great science to achieve the contact of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, and it is open for all living beings, including the sudras, vaishas, women, or even those lower than the sudras who are called lowborn. So, what to speak of the high class men, like the qualified Brahmins and the great self realized kings? The other high grade activities designated as sacrifice, charity, austerity, etc., are all corollary factors following the pure and scientific bhakti cult. The principles of knowledge and detachment are two important factors on the path of transcendental realization. The whole spiritual process leads to perfect knowledge of everything, material and spiritual, and the results of such perfect knowledge are that one becomes detached from material affection and becomes attached to spiritual activities. Becoming detached from material things does not mean becoming inert altogether, as men with a poor fund of knowledge think. Nice karma means not undertaking such activities that will produce good or bad effects. Negation does not mean negation of the positive. Negation of the non-essentials does not mean negation of the essentials. Similarly, detachment from material forms does not mean nullifying the positive form. The bhakti cult is meant for realization of the positive form. When the positive form is realized, the negative forms are automatically eliminated. Therefore, with the development of the bhakti cult, with the application of the positive service to the positive form, one naturally becomes detached from inferior things and he becomes attached to superior things. Similarly, the bhakti cult, being the supermost occupation of the living being, leads him out of material sense enjoyment. That is the sign of a pure devotee. He is neither a fool, nor is he engaged in the inferior energies, nor does he have material values. This is not possible by dry reasoning. It actually happens by the grace of the Almighty. In conclusion, one who is a pure devotee has all other good qualities, namely knowledge, detachment, etc. But one who has only knowledge or detachment is not necessarily well acquainted with the principles of the bhakti cult. Bhakti is the supermost occupation of the human being.